Welcome to Famous Fortunes. I hope you are well. I've got a story to tell you, folks. I have a story to tell you. Uh, I have. Just... <laughs> this is next level story. Uh, this is um, this is hot off the press. This story, um, and uh, I am going to tell you this story. Uh, I'm going to tell you this story right now. Um, what am I going to even read on today? I don't know, but we'll get there. Uh, so the story is all right. I'm doing some. I'm, I'm doing not curse breaking. I, I'm trying out a different thing. I'm doing on a family member who I suspect is possessed, and you know, negative possession, entity inside, all the rest of it. Um, I'm actually doing a bit of distance depossession, let's say, and I'm. I don't have as much experience with it, and I can't confirm. Uh, I haven't been able to confirm it's worked up until today. <laughs> and um, so I, I have more experience with the sort of, you know, someone has black magic on them, witchcraft. Someone has witchcraft that's attached to them, all that type of thing. So that, that I'm, you know, I have more experience with that. But okay, so in any event, so I'm doing this other thing to, to remove, you know, an entity sort of attached to them or inside them because they get inside the body, right? It's, I know it's crazy to say, but it, it's true. They get inside the body and... In any event, so I'm doing this uh, curse breaking, uh, well, not curse breaking, let's go, I don't know, depossession, what are we going to call it? And uh, after, you know, maybe 10 minutes or so, I start to see an orb, a small, let's say faint light, uh, the size of a match head near, uh, you know, in front of me, like a little thing, oh, something's coming in, I'm like, okay, that's not a good sign that uh, it's all clear on their end. That's not a good sign. That's a sort of a sign something's peeking its head in going, what's happening here? You know, what, you know what's being done to the host, let's say. Uh, it's getting hot in here. <laughs> it's getting hot in here for me. What's happening? So I keep going. The orb disappears. And then about another 10 minutes later, a full-on black spirit emerges in the room out of nowhere, just completely out of nowhere. And it stinks too. It stank. It stank like sulfur, you know, like, like, I mean, it's a bit, very traditional, um, uh, sign that if the room immediately starts to smell like garbage or sulfur and you're like, you're in your own house and you don't have a pile of garbage sitting next to you, that's a very bad sign that there's a, a very negative entity around. Uh, the good news is when entities take form like this, like you see them as a, as a shadow being, like that's what it was basically, but it manifested like a little whirlwind. Um, that's when they're vulnerable. So there's two times they're really vulnerable is if they're inside someone, you can kind of cook them, <laughs> right? You got to cook them. Uh, like if they're inside yourself and then you can do, you know, certain, if you can perform something and it'll cook pretty quickly, it'll be gone. Uh, they're vulnerable inside people. They're vulnerable in dreams. So if they come to you when you're dreaming, then they're vulnerable. Uh, where do you hear, where, where else do you hear this? I know. Uh, well, I want to teach this. We'll talk about that in a moment. They're vulnerable inside you. They're vulnerable if they come to you when you're dreaming, because then that's their playing field, the the sort of the energetic realm, right? That's their home. That, that's their sort of natural state. They're vulnerable when they take form like a shadow person, or you see them take a, like a, a dark cloud in your room. That's, that's vulnerability because oftentimes they can, they're not so vulnerable when they're hiding in the, in the unseen, let's say hiding in the, in another dimension, they can be looking at you from another dimension, but sort of be more sort of secure where they are, you know, like even as a little orb, they're more secure when they fully manifest as a spirit. That's when they're vulnerable. Let's just say, um, we're just going to have to, you know, I'm just going to shed a tear out of my left eye for that poor devil because he's not with us anymore. And, uh, he just took the rainbow bridge, not the upswing of the rainbow bridge, <laughs> you know, he took the rainbow bridge where it turns and it goes down into the ground and, you know, down to the nether regions. He took the rainbow bridge and we unfortunately won't be seeing him again, uh, at all. So again, again, it's just tragic. It's just tragic. Poor fella. Poor fella. Yeah, poor fella. He didn't know. He didn't know. What can I say? What can I say? So oh, he, he'll have a lot to answer for. Uh, and what he, what was he doing inside of that person? Now, that's, that's, that's another question. Was he sent? Mm, it's possible. Was he sent or, you know, I'd say it's a he from the energy, but certainly very demonic apparition. Now I do want to, I do, you know, the thing is I want to, I want to be more open with all of this. I want to be more open with all of this. The problem is, I mean, if you start seeing spirits appear in your room, 
uh, you know, getting you trying because he's trying to get me to stop. That's basically what it is. Just stop doing what you're doing. He's trying to intimidate me. Take a form. Like he's all big and powerful. Oh, big and powerful demon. Come and come and scare me. Oh, I'm so scared when a big demon appears. <laughs> you know what I mean, you know what I'm saying. You know, I've, this is my first rodeo. So my first rodeo, and certainly not my first execution. Let's say, <laughs> let's say that. You don't negotiate with devils. That's all I'm going to say. You don't talk to them. Never speak to a devil. If a devil speaks to you, like you hear a voice or whatever, you never speak back to it. Never speak back to it. Never never grace it with, with a reply ever. You just you just hit it. You just you just hit it. You just absolutely, you drop a bomb on it. That's all you should do, straight up. They don't, we don't negotiate. We don't talk to demons. There's nothing to talk about. You just send them back to, back home. You send them home. That's all. You send them home. All right, so that's that story. What are we reading on today? Um, I don't know. Hope you hope you're all sleeping better after yesterday's episode with the rose water and all the rest of it. Um, I certainly had the. I had such a good sleep. I have so much sleep to catch up on over the last few months. I'm sleeping really well now. I'll tell you that much. Sleep sleep so good. I'm sleeping so good now. Uh, you know, it's so good. So what can I say? Having a good time. Uh, having a good time. And in the last, say, maybe two months, I had two two entities come to me in my sleep, and they never, they that was the last we heard of them. <laughs> they don't do that anymore. They only do it once or twice until they realize they're losing, they're losing team members. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I laugh. I know. Some people worship these entities. What can I say? Uh, some people worship them. Like, people like, leave them offerings, they have deals with them, uh, they think they're powerful, you know, or powerful, because I have a, I have an entity, yeah, um, all right, all right, good luck, where's my candle, I want to show you my candle, this is the original yellow one, so it's still going strong, this is the rose blend, it's a, it's, it's amazing, it's just magic, it's fantastic, um, I'm very much into this candle, uh, we've got the Onyx Square today, thank you very much, Onyx Square in the house, um, I was wearing this just before when I was uh, um, having a barbecue. <laughs> Let's say having a barbecue. Maybe that's why I smelt the thing because it was being cooked. <laughs> it's been a little bit toasty. Actually, that's not the first time that's happened. Actually, there was one time in the car there was something around. I don't know crazy, right? and then I started to you know get rid of it. And it started to stink. It started to stink and smell like probably because it's being fried. You know, if you fry a turd, you start to smell like shite. <laughs> um, you know what? It's a breakthrough. It's a breakthrough. I've never, I haven't done that at a distance before. I haven't done that. So what I'm, what I'm saying is if people are, you know, actually people are asking now. I'm getting, I'm getting messages. People are asking me for help. And I want to help people. I want to help people. I just need to sort of um, make sure that I've confirmed I can do this from like deep possession from a distance because you know I'm having queries on that particularly I think people I know are possessed um and it's so possible it is extremely possible and if they don't want to help themselves what do you do this is the question what do you do um and I don't know if yeah I don't know if many people are going to want to actually do it themselves and see the demon come through I mean some people might <laughs> but there's a lot of there's probably some more training you there's some training you're going to need and uh, and to, you got to know that that's something you want to see as well. I guess this has been I've been seeing these things for too long now. I've probably just laugh. I just laugh, right? But it's probably quite shocking to some people. <laughs> I just laugh. I mean, it's hilarious. Let's get into today's reading. What are we reading on today with the old tarot cards? I'm trying to look for a topic. What's the news? What's the goss? Harry and Megs. Let's find out. Um, this is very impromptu today. They're in panic mode. Da, 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 da. Mm, okay, I don't know. I don't know if that's terribly exciting. What can we read on today? I'm just trying to. I'm going to pick up from the audience. What can we read on? No, you know what we're going to read on today. We're going to read on. Um, what are we going to read on? Oh no, I don't want to do that topic today. What can we read on? Hmm. Going to get some. Da, 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 we're going to get some. We're going to get some. We're going to just touch base a little bit here. What's what's happening with? What's happening with Doria? I don't know. What is happening with Doria? What is happening with Doria? How's, how's Doria going at the moment? I wonder. How, let's just have an energy check in today with Harry and Megan. Let's do that. Candle starting to. What's happening there? Oh, that's a little bit. That's yeah, a little bit hot. Uh, we'll do an energy check in today with the Markles. That's what we're doing. Harry and Megs. Why not? 
um, let's do this. Let's do an energy check in with the Markles. Let's start with Harry. How's Harry's energy at the moment? How's he going? Cards are hot. Harry, how are you going? Five of Cups, eh? Uh, five of Swords. Ooh, defeated, defeated, defeated. Defeated, deflated, and depressed. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, 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 um, that's something. Oh, wow. I, don't know, I think that's a, that's a title for today's episode. Okay, next card. Oh no, the El Diablo. Does he need a? Does he need some help from a distance? Six of Swords. Is it, what's this here? Six of Swords. King of Cups. Underlying energy. Okay, so wow. Take a picture of this. This is this is textbook. I'm not having a good time. <laughs> this is textbook. This is if you were to look this up in the tarot dictionary, which there isn't one, but probably should be. Uh, if you were to look this up, I'm not going to write one, but in any event, you would see this under the heading of, uh, you know, not having a good time. Because there's sadness, there's depression, there's sadness here, there's depression, there's regret here, there's a whole bunch of regrets, there's a whole bunch of sadness, feelings of loss and pain and suffering, it's terrible. I don't know how we're going to sort of, how do we judge this up to sort of at least have it high vibe? I don't, I don't know. Uh, five of Swords, of course, you know, feeling like plans have not come to fruition. Uh, he has, you know, I guess ultimately he's lost big time here and his endeavors, his endeavors have been defeated. His endeavors have not worked. His plans to conquer and win have failed. Um, oh, it's just terrible. And uh, he is you know, really picking up the pieces, of course, his plans and his, his, uh, his thinking and his strategies and his scheming and all of that has not come to fruition. And he is suffering greatly at the moment in, in, in sort of facing, you know, weary from, uh, his endeavors, weary from wanting to do it again. Uh, oh no. I mean, how many, oh boy. And then we have, of course, the devil. Where's the devil swear jar? Where is the devil swear jar? We're going to need him. We're going to need him today. A lot of donations this year, which is fantastic for the devil swear jar. It's not that far off. Will we donate our money to charity this year? It's not that far off um, at all. Okay, so we have the devil, of course, which means that there is a influence in his life, let's say. There's an influence in his life that's um, problematic. And... <laughs> and is you know chronic issue in fact in all you know before we take let's just take our biases off because we do see the devil for a certain person over and over again that certainly can be the case you know he certainly could be depressed defeated and deflated because of this devil energy of course it rings true uh, in many ways amazing how many times we see the devil does that surprise you it doesn't surprise me uh not anymore but it also could mean that there's something that's sort of wrong at the moment. Now, it could be some type of addiction. It could be some type of obsession. It could be some type of, uh, you know, all of the above. It could be so there's something there that's sort of creeped in and doesn't want to leave. <laughs> right? Doesn't want to leave. You have to cook it, right? <laughs> you have to cook it. I actually, I did read um, that some people... When they do certain things, they have dreams of snakes and they're like putting the snake in the oven. <laughs> like they're being cooked. I think that's hilarious. I know some people, some people, some people love, they love the snakes. They love the tattooing the snakes on themselves. They love the snake charms. They love the whole imagery and iconography and all the rest of it. Uh, they are sort of astral representations of negative entities. So be warned, be very warned. And snake, is, in, in terms of the astral realm, snakes are generally a very negative symbol. So dreams, I'm talking about dreams or visions. If you see dreams or visions of snakes, be very, very weary be very weary. They're not angels. <laughs> they're certainly not. I know. There's a bit of a debate. Some people say they're fallen angels. And that's yeah, not for one moment were they ever angelic entities in reality. But anyway, we digress. 
Well, you digress. I know a lot of people are going to, you know, disagree with me on saying that. But, I mean, yeah. If you saw these entities, you would know. There's just no angelic... No, nothing. There's nothing angelic about them whatsoever. They're just, just demonic through and through. And they're not in any way... Um, you know, heavenly beings or, or once heavenly beings uh, in any way, shape or form. So in any event, uh, there is another, there's another species out there, let's say, right? There's another species. You have angels for sure. You have humans, obviously, and uh, you have interdimensionals. Right? The third, the third kind, right? And the third kind. All right. And the devil, of course, is the king of the third kind, let's say. The king crook. I mean, look at this beast. So they're, they're people, this is this is what regarded as the name of this devil is Baphomet, right? Now, I don't know if I would call Baphomet the devil, but it's certainly a devil. You know, legions of devils, right? There's like hierarchies, like like an army, you know, like generals and colonels and, you know, majors and, you know, foot, you know, basically pawns. What do you call them? Sorry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, no, it's like a, a structure. It's a structural thing. And... Um, I mean, they literally, uh, my understanding is Baphomet literally looks like this. Like, I mean, how, like, what? That, what? That thing didn't fall. That thing wasn't an angel. <laughs> that thing's not an angel. Right? In, in any event, all right. It's people, yeah, exactly, whatever. Okay, so the devil's here on the cards. So there's a big, fat problem. Harry has himself in some type of, he has himself in some way found himself in a, a in a in an energy that is best explained by the devil card in the tarot. Now, what does that mean? The, look at the chains around their neck. They can take those off at any time. They're welcome to leave, but they sort of are uh, self-chaining in a way. And that is kind of, you know, the illusion of the devil. You can walk away. You know what I'm saying? You can walk away. You can leave those people or behaviors or those negative things, but it just becomes addictive. It becomes compulsive. It becomes obsessive. It becomes servitude. You end up serving that energy, right? Literally, you end up serving that energy and you don't really know why. Why am I serving this energy? Why am I so bound to this energy? But it really, it's yourself. And that's kind of the, that's the, that's the tale of this tarot card, right? That's the tale of this tarot card. So the six of swords is interesting. Here and it's something I've seen recently as well. It's kind of moving forward, moving on, trying to move on, but he can't. That's kind of what I'm going to read out of this reading. He's gonna, he's trying to move on. He it looks like interestingly with the King of Cups. He's learning. Hey, look at this card. It's underlying energy, but I'm going to bring it front and center. He's actually learning from this experience. I know some people are probably are going to balk at that idea. Uh, he's not the fool here. He's the King of Cups. He's actually learned from this. He's actually, I mean, he's been doing it for how many years now? Seven years. Hey, remember, eight years, seven or eight years is actually a full cycle. You know, a lot of relationships go after seven or eight years. Um, uh, it's a full, it's, it's, it is in, in many, in a few different traditions, recognize seven to eight years as a sort of, as a cycle. But, um, in, in any event, that's a, that's another story for another time. Uh, you know, 2016, I think, was the year we looked up rec <coughs> recently. Touchdown. Have some more tea. So we're 20, you know, 2023 now. We are seven to eight years, pretty much. So it's a full cycle. So this will be the first test, and then probably the next test would be, I don't know, 13 years or something. Maybe it would be another cycle. Uh, 13 being shorthand for completion. One and three is four, and forty is a complete sort of is a completion. You know, forty comes up many times in different traditions. So, I'm giving you some numerology here as well. Some numerology, all right? Forty. Forty is important. I bet in your tradition, your beliefs, forty is important somewhere. But in any event, it's like maturity. It's the age of maturity in so in many in many sort of. If you think about it, it's the time frame of maturity. Forty days, forty years, forty nights, whatever. All right, thousand and one nights, <laughs> right? It's interesting how they say a thousand and one, I and mean, that's interesting. There, there has to be like, if they throw that at the end. I don't know why, but in any event. Now, he's trying to move on, but he can't. This is what it is. He's learned. He's suffering. He's defeated, def deflated, and depressed. 
defeated, deflated, and depressed. That's what I see here on the cards. All right, let's look at how Megan's going. That was quite an in-depth review, an in-depth review of those cards. How's Megzy going? Let's do an energy check. Cards are hot. Megzy. Megzy, baby. Uh, this candle's bumping, I'll tell you what. It smells good. Uh, the Chariot, the Nine of Cups. So different for Harry. Look at this. So different. The, the Hanged Man. The Prince of Pentacles. And the Two of Wands. Underlying Energy is the Ace of Cups. So she's loving it. Loving life. Look at this. Nine of Cups. Loving it. Loving it. Happy with herself, trying to move forward or moving things forward, looking for opportunities, I would say, here with the Ace of Cups and the Two of Wands. Okay, the opportunities are sort of few and far between right now. I'd say this. Things are becoming a little bit... Uh, maybe her reputation's wearing out a little. Maybe she knows that. Or maybe at least the opportunities are wearing a bit thin. That's what I think is happening here. The opportunities are wearing a bit thin. Perhaps she's feeling a bit stuck. But yet she's very happy with herself and she's moving forward at a cracking pace as quick as she can even though that she's sort of suffering some setbacks and not able to move forward she's still putting that energy in she's just going to keep going just going to keep going with it harry on the other hand looks like he's reached the end of his tether that's what i see on the cards very different energies very different energies it looks like harry wants to move on but he can't he wants to move on but he cannot wasn't that interesting Are there any good comments i haven't checked the comments today Let's have a let's have a look at the commentses. A lot of white candles are, are being blazed up. A lot of white candles, which is nice. A lot of prayers are coming in. A lot of prayers and white candles, and uh, that is good stuff. Good stuff. Could the empress be the judge? I don't think so because the judge was a man, and that doesn't make sense. And it, it would be very, very clear. I think it's there's some. It's a mother archetype. It's a mother archetype. Otherwise, we'd see something else. It's very rare we see the emperor and the empress. It, it's very significant to see those cards. Um, unless we're talking about the king or the queen. It's extremely different. The tarot is really saying something. Mother and father. Uh, Marjim says, good morning, this is Team Famous Fortunes, Marjim, why isn't whatever they're doing with Sister Samantha's case has been approved to go forward? Thank you, let's find out. What's happening with, with uh, what they're doing on Samantha's case, whatever that may be, legal or otherwise, legal or, I don't know, a little bit magical, let's say, let's find out, that's a good question. Maybe they're having a hard time at the moment, <laughs> in that arena, maybe they're having a hard time. This guy's getting a bit flamey, isn't he? It's one of those things with the these candles. They're sort of they're quite difficult to get to burn evenly. I think you've got to trim the wicks as well. That wick might need a good trimming. So let that be known. Why are they struggling? Cards are hot. Queen of Swords. Queen of Swords. The Tower. Oh, that's that's interesting. It's come out reverse because the Tower speaks of some type of cursing situation let's find out the death card reversed oh wow well, i don't read reverse but i'm gonna read them today ace of wands and then the four of swords because whatever they've done to stop it hasn't worked it's backfired it's blown back on them the tower and the death card reversed hang on a sec i'm just gonna get something to this candle has actually blown back on them and i need to trim that wick so what i'm gonna do it's a little lesson you get a little bit of the the, the juice and you just that's how you put a candle out without without pushing the wick into the wax and without having, you know, if you blow it out with some candles, you just get steaming, you know, steaming wax. So that's how you do that. And that's, I mean, that's actually an incense stick. So, I mean, that would catch. <laughs> okay, so what they've done has blown back. See, they're, they're, they're sort of there. Where's this hair? Where's this hair come from? That's not guinea pig hair. That's, well, <laughs> that's long. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, in any event, uh, that's, that, that'd be a big guinea pig. Uh, <laughs> um, that says to me that, look, there's a woman here that's like directing this, trying to, you know, 
speak to this, let's say, speak words of power or powerful words or powerful rhetoric, whatever, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But the tower is reversed, death card's reversed. So they're trying to put an end to this and it's actually blown back on them. So, whoa. Uh, make of that what you will. They're trying to move it sort of, it's been moved forward. They've tried to kill it. They've tried to blow it up and it's backfired. Um, very interesting use of reversals here on the, on the cards. They've tried, Ace of Wands, they've tried, and the Four of Swords here, they're trying, they're kind of basically thinking, why didn't that work? They're resting after the battle. Why, they're contemplating, why didn't that work? They don't know. They don't know. So what an interesting question you have asked, Marjim, and a very interesting answer we have from the Tarot. Uh, so, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. And um, with that said, I thank you for your question and I will see you all in the comments.